Hello, everyone, and welcome to another webinar brought to you by uh, New Canadians, this time about preparing ahead, planning for your Canadian employment. Uh, as I mentioned, this uh, webinar is brought to you by New Canadians. New Canadians is a TV show and a web series uh, for newcomers to Canada and would-be immigrants. And uh, you can watch us on Omni Television in Canada or online on our website and our YouTube channel where this webinar is uh, being live streamed. Uh, the webinar is in collaboration with Next Stop Canada, a pre-arrival service, uh, and I'm honored to uh, welcome two amazing uh, speakers from Next Stop Canada, uh, Tyson Dima Yuga, Community Engagement and Content Specialist at Next Stop Canada, and Abra Ashfaq, Outreach and Community Relations Team Leader at Next Stop Canada. Uh, welcome, Tyson, and welcome, Abra, to this webinar. Thank you, Gerard. Thank you, Gerard. Uh, I know uh, while you're uh, preparing your uh, slides, Abra, uh, I know that the uh, attendees who have joined us today from different parts of the world, I can see from Nigeria, from Pakistan, from India, uh, they are all eager to hear uh, your uh, newcomer job search experiences and your advice about uh, strategically planning for uh, their career transition once they land in Canada. So over to you, Abra and Tyson. Thank you so much, Gerard. And um, hello and good morning or afternoon or evening, everyone, uh, depending on wherever in the world you are. Um, and I hope everyone's doing well. Um, if um, Tyson, you could confirm, you can see the slides, right, that I'm sharing? Yes, Abra, it's all good. All right. All right, perfect. Uh, so yeah, welcome to our live webinar on planning uh, or sorry, preparing ahead or planning for Canadian employment brought to you by YMC of Greater Toronto's pre-arrival program, Next Stop Canada, which is funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada in collaboration with New Canadians TV. So we would like to uh, begin by thanking all of you for joining us today. So now before we go ahead with our presentation, we would just quickly introduce ourselves. So as Gerard mentioned, my name is Abra Shvak and I am an Outreach and Community Relations Coordinator at Next Up Canada. Um, I moved to Canada in uh, 2019 and um, since then I've been a part of this amazing team. Uh, but in the past, I have lived in four different countries. So I have been through the transition of um, settlement a few times. But these experiences have given me so many opportunities professionally as well as personally. So I'm just using this platform uh, and sharing those experiences to help others experience similar successes, opportunities and growth that I've experienced in moving to Canada. So that's all about myself. Uh, now I would like to invite Tyson uh, to please introduce yourself. All right. Thank you so much, Abra. So hello, everyone. My name is Tyson Dimayuga. I moved to Canada in 2016 as a permanent resident from the Philippines. I have experience in banking, customer service, sales, and marketing. I'm currently a community engagement and content specialist for Next Stop Canada. Having gone through the transition of settling in a new country, now I share my professional skills in helping other newcomers in their transition to their lives in Canada through our program, Next Stop Canada. I have employed numerous job search strategies over the years that helped me navigate through the, my career transition and progression in this country. Today, me and Abra will gladly share these ser job search strategies that has worked for the most of us. At the end of the presentation, we will open the floor to all of your questions. All right, thank you so much, Tyson. Uh, so yeah, now without uh, further ado, I will quickly touch on the webinar agenda for today before we get into the presentation. So first we will be talking about um, understanding your skills and how you can establish your goals based on those skills. Um, this is really important because you may have heard stories from newcomers that uh, they send out hundreds of resumes uh, to get a job and some stories may be positive and some may be negative, but they may impact your expectations on what your uh, own personal experience should be like. But we are here to tell you today that everyone's experience is different and it is advised to stay focused on your own plan and strategy based on your goals and skills. So that's why it's really important to discuss those two um, 
areas and then we will be discussing what is labor market information and some tools that you can use to explore your options and lastly uh, we are also going to discuss the pre-arrival programs and that are available to you free of cost uh, to get familiar with the labor market and also to get support uh, in finding a job in Canada regardless of your experience so now we will officially begin our presentation and I would like to invite Tyson to please um, start. You're muted. Sorry about that. There you go. <laughs> so we're just going to dive right into the first part of the presentation. So we're going to go, we're going to keep, um, we're going to discuss on how understanding yourself can help you better for employment. So understanding yourself is very important when creating a career plan as you want to find a job that is suited to who you are, your interests, strengths, values, and skills. From early childhood and throughout our lives as people, we are developing our interests. Interests are basically something we would like to learn more about, whether it's dancing, politics, or even computer programming, and the list goes on. But what really helps us find employment that we enjoy and succeed in is when we align our interests with our skills. For example, if you're someone who is super interested in public speaking and have developed a great presentation skills over time, you may find a fulfilling job or career as a teacher or in sales. So Abra, what were your interests that you've had that helped you discover your career? Thank you so much, Tyson. Um, that's a great question. Um, it's a little bit tricky because it took me a while to understand that where I, which area I would love to work uh, in. And that's why I did um, my bachelor was in a different field of study and my previous education was in a different field of um was in a different field. But yeah, one thing that really helped me is that over time, I realized that I love to uh, work with people or to be in a position where I could help others. So yeah, that was one thing uh, I understand about my interest. And that led me in completing my master's in social sciences. And, um, you know, from there onwards, I have been working within the social sector or for the charities. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, I do agree, you know, it may take time for you to really discover, you'll go through different paths. Some people get to know about it early on, some people may be a bit later, but again, there's no time limit with that. Um, so we'll go on. So basically, it's important that you begin with a solid understanding of yourself. Today, I wanted to touch on how understanding hard skills, soft skills, and transferable skills can help you plan for better employment. So first, let's start by talking about hard skills. Hard skills are skills that you learn over time. These skills not, is not something that you were born with. Instead, you can acquire them through training and practice. For example, a hard skill that many people may have these days are computer skills, such as using social media or using Excel or a spreadsheet. Other types of hard skills can be selling products or even building furnitures. Now let's talk about soft skills. Soft skills are described to be your personality, attitude, and overall work ethic. For example, things like communication skills, leadership, conflict resolution, and teamwork are just some skills that reflect whether you would be a good fit for the company's culture. In some countries, your years of experience in a field are highly valued by employers, and this alone can land you a job. However, in Canada, soft skills are just as important as hard skills. For many newcomers, the concept of soft skills may be new. Therefore, it is important to familiarize yourself with this idea. So how do you discover or highlight your soft skills? Again, it can be new to everybody. I experienced the same transition. So it was pretty new to myself as well. So you can highlight these skills in your resume, cover letter, and during the interview. However, make sure to think of examples to showcase how you demonstrated these skills in a particular position or situation. We'll focus on teamwork, for example. In the interview, you can mention situations when you have worked with multiple people to reach an important deadline or goal. 
within your team or how you communicated with your colleagues to make sure everyone's opinion and insights are being heard. This can help you stand out from other applicants when applying for a job wherein you have demonstrated indeed being in a team and working in an organization. If you're having trouble in figuring out your soft skills, one tip that has always, always helped me is by asking your friends, family, and colleagues. These are the people who know you the best and can pinpoint your strengths in terms of these skills. Finally, we have transferable skills. Transferable skills are skills that are related to your past work experience. So this pretty much really is um, what newcomers to Canada have with them because most of um, newcomers to Canada are highly experienced and have different backgrounds in professions. So when you arrive to Canada, it's possible that you may need to consider working in a job that is different from your previous occupation due to a career change or just temporarily until you get your target job. And it's important for you to know that you already have several skills and attributes required to succeed in your career. These are your transferable skills. For that reason, taking the time to explore your skills that you already have is important as part of your job search process. Common transferable skills can include problem solving, communication skills, customer service skills, leadership, and adaptability. For example, let's say you're a furniture builder in your home country, but maybe that's not your goal once you get to Canada. However, however, that doesn't mean that your furniture building skills are completely useless when you move here. In fact, this shows excellent transferable skills like your attention to detail or ability to work with your hands. You could definitely highlight these skills in a completely different industry, such as working as a chef, maybe a baker, or even working in trades. Another example is most uh, of transferable skills would be a personal one. So when I first moved to Canada, my first job that I got was a telephone interviewer. Although I never worked as a contact center agent or work in the phone back in the Philippines, I was able to land a job because I was able to highlight to the employer that I had customer service experience with me, which is a requirement to succeed in their role. So overall, career planning starts by knowing yourself and your skills. Once you have identified that, you can begin to establish your goals, which we'll talk about on the next slide. All right. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. So goal is extremely important when it comes to planning for employment. This means that instead of just sending out resumes to every job opportunities available, you would have to make preparations before applying, which includes goal setting. Establishing your goals and making an action plan is important because it will give you life direction, boost your confidence, and provide motivation to move your career forward. Goal, goal setting, rather, will allow you to first, Pick the right jobs for your career. Give you a chance to evaluate your job search strategy at any time. Tailor your resume to give you a better chance of being called for an interview. And lastly, it will help you stay in control of your short-term and long-term day-to-day job hunting activities. That being said, let's review what you need to do to set a great goal setting for your career. As a first step, it's good to do your research and gather information. You can begin by looking at different industries in Canada, finding out if your credentials are valid and whether or not if your profession is regulated or unregulated in this country, and also be updated on industry trends. After you have done your research and collected information on your profession, you might stumble upon some barriers such as maybe a missing skill, a missing language. This is very common, but don't be discouraged. There are many services for immigrants in Canada that will assist you in your job search and preparation. There are even steps you can take before coming to Canada that can make your transition much easier. We will cover those options throughout today's webinar. 
Third, it's important to evaluate your choices to ensure that these are attainable goals and make sure you have a backup plan if one doesn't work. Last but not the least, you will now be ready to, to set your short and long-term goals. And I want to touch on those two right now. So first, there is what we call the short-term goals. These are easier to achieve and can be accomplished within a week or maybe some months and maybe a few years. Usually, these short-term goals are part of a bigger, longer-term goals that you break down into a more manageable sections. One example of a short-term goal could be looking for temporary employment. And this goes on for most of our newcomers. So you may have, a, you may have heard the term survival job. Here at Next Stop Canada, we refer it as a transition job because this type of job is only temporary and should be a pathway towards your long-term career goal. Try to look for a temporary job related to your field, and this will provide consistency and focus in your career and put you in the right place should new opportunities arise. If you must take a temporary job outside your field, aim for a weekend or part-time hours so you can use the rest of the time to search an interview for your desired professional position. Once you know your short-term goals, then you can focus on your long-term goals. A long-term goal is something that you want to accomplish in the future that requires more time and planning and may take at least one to five years to achieve. Sometimes it can even be more than that. These are often, mo are often the most meaningful and important goals. However, what is usually the challenge for our long-term goals? It's achieving this goal is usually far in the future, given the timeline. As a result, we can lose focus and it's harder to maintain a positive attitude towards these goals as you may experience some additional challenges on the way in reaching them. But remember that goal setting keeps you on track and keeps you motivated in achieving your long-term goal. Now, I will pass the presentation into Abra who will talk about how labor market information can help you plan for your employment. All right, thank you so much, Tyson. Um, and those were some great, um, you know, goal setting tips. So thank you about that as well. So yeah, um, if you have already started planning for employment, you must have heard or seen the word labor market information. So I want to start off today's discussion on labor market information with what exactly is this and how it can help you. So labor market information answers a few questions that you can find on your screen right now. So what jobs and skills employers are looking for, which job areas are growing in the future, what education and training you need for specific jobs, or um, where to find employers who are hiring, and last but not the least, what factors can stop you from, the, from getting the job that you want. So it's really important to understand it because uh, many newcomers come to, let's say, Ontario uh, because of the vast uh, job opportunities available here. But all of these varied opportunities also come with a competitive labor market. So this is why it's so important to plan your employment strategy based on these questions before arriving in Canada. And besides this, learning uh, this is also important if you are someone um, who is just uh, starting their career or if you are someone who's planning to get into post-secondary education so you can understand or get more um, insight into uh, what does the labor market information look for the specific industry you were looking in. So yeah, and then um, all of this information can be found on the internet, uh, in newspapers and magazines, uh, through networking um, uh, sites, newcomer services as well, including pre-arrival programs. So in the next few slides, we will be discussing these tools and resources to help you gather the right labor market information that might be helpful for you. Okay, so... On your screen are the tools that we are going to discuss today uh, to help you gather labor market information, starting off with Job Bank. Here we go. So as I said, um, 
we are going to start off with Job Bank because it is actually a government of Canada's leading source of um, job and labor market information. It offers users uh, free occupational and career information uh, like job opportunities, uh, employment requirements, what are the main duties uh, for that specific position, uh, wages and salaries as well, uh, current employment trends in the industry and the outlooks. So this, this specific site can actually help people search for work, make career goals, and see what job is in demand uh, or profession regulations if it's required for that specific uh, industry. So in the next slide, I will actually go through the uh, website in each uh, section on how it looks or how it can help you. So basically, when you search for an occupation on Job Bank, it offers you um, multiple sections with information that is related to your field. So uh, for example, the, the screenshot on your screen is actually when you open Job Bank of Canada's website, this is what comes up. And then um, if um, just using this example under what is the name of your occupation, you write mechanical engineer. And then for the city or the province, maybe you pick Toronto, Ontario, uh, just using this as an example. And then uh, if you press search, this is, um, what comes up next after you click on the search button. So the first section on this window is summary, uh, which is an overview of the occupation. For example, it will give me um, a summarized information on each of the information related to mechanical engineer as an occupation in Toronto, and how does it look like? So this is an overall snapshot of the occupation for you. Then if you go next, which is description, it is actually a short description on the occupation. And it also highlights the common job duties and titles for mechanical engineer. This is um, important because um, the country you might be coming from, your job title might be different. But then when you search it on Job Bank, you find out that your job description matches exactly what you are doing right now, but the job title is different from what it is being used in your previous position. So in that case, it's really important because that helps you understand what exactly is the title or the keyword that you're looking uh, or using when you are searching for jobs. And I know like a lot of people run into this problem myself. Um, I was um, I had to face this problem as well. So this is just to understand what is really the language used in Canada for that specific position or the industry. All right, so next we have wages. So in this section, you find three prevailing uh, wage statistics. So there is low, median, and high that highlights how much you're expected to earn based on where you are in your career, um, lower level, mid-level, or, um, or higher level. And then we have prospects, or you can call it outlook as well. So this is basically an overall outlook of your job in the chosen region. region. So it tells you if it's fair, uh, good, or excellent. And this is a great insight into the occupation outlook, especially for people who are just starting off their post-secondary education or their career um, and plan to stay in the same region. And this is also great for people who are still deciding where to live in Canada. And based on this factor, uh, they might be able to decide that where, um, let's say you want to become a mechanical engineer, you can decide where, um, there, there is a higher demand for a mechanical engineer in Canada. So you can look at different provinces and um, see the overall outlook of the industry or the job. All right, so next we have is job, which is list of job opportunities available. Uh, this is really important because first of all, you can apply for jobs through Job Bank, and then you also know where the job, who is hiring and who isn't, but this is, also important because going through the available job opportunities or the descriptions might help you understand the job expectations and relate it back to your experience and goals and also help you in um, editing your resume. You can use the language or the vocabulary, uh, you know, and transfer that into your resume. So um, you can actually relate it back to the job and you're applying for it. 
So next we have requirements and skills. Uh, so in these two sections, you will find out what is typically required to work in your desired job, including um, skills and technical expertise and professional certifications in some cases. And then also under skills, you will mainly find soft skills required for this field. So for example, public speaking, or good writing skills um, and all uh, those uh, soft skills, whereas under the requirements, you will find hard skills as in what uh, certification is required, what doc, um, what um, education level is required, or if there is a requirement for a professional certification if your uh, industry is licensed in Canada. So uh, yeah, that's basically all the sections. Um, on job bank once you uh, search for a specific um, title or the industry as well and just one last bonus trip uh, tip sorry for all of you uh, so on the top of the page where um, you see trend analysis and uh, there is a arrow pointing towards it as well if you click on that option you will uh, it will give you options to explore market so this is where you could explore further and even compare the occupations based on the wages or the outlooks, um, especially, uh, um, sorry, especially if you are still deciding which career path to take. So you can compare, do the comparison between the two provinces or the two cities um, if you cannot make your mind there. All right. So that is all about job bank. Uh, now the other online resources that you could explore to um, further do your labor market research uh, could include provincial labor market information website. So just an example, uh, you can consider taking a look at Ontario's labor market webpage that highlights um, Ontario's employment patterns, trends in the economy, description of jobs, uh, types of employers who are hiring uh, workers in each group. Group. Uh, and then uh, average salaries as well. So all of this information is specific to Ontario if you go to a provincial um, labor market information website and it updates on a regular basis. And again, this is just an example. You can uh, search for all provinces uh, because every province has its own labor market information website or a web page. So you can find it by doing a simple Google search, just search labor market information in Alberta, for example. And then usually the top on the page uh, comes um, the the provincial labor market information website for Alberta, so you can search it by do um, by doing a Google search. Next are online business directories. So business directories are useful source of information about con uh, companies. Um, you can actually use them to find key contacts and comprehensive business information specific to your target industry on these directories. Uh, the two most uh, famous ones would be Scott's directories and um, there's also a Fraser's Canadian uh, trade directories. Then there are also news websites and business magazines, which are also some amazing source for labor market information because following the labor market news and events is the key um, is actually a key for the job seekers to understand where the opportunity might be in the local community uh, or in, elsewhere in Canada. So well, some of the most popular resources would be uh, the star, there's a BNN Bloomberg, uh, there's CBC, then there is McLean's magazine and Canadian business magazines and you can access them online. They are available um, over the internet. And lastly, uh, we have LinkedIn. So you can use LinkedIn to follow organizations and industry leaders in specific sector that you are interested in. And it is specifically useful if you are not in Canada yet because it is an online platform and can be accessed from anywhere. So make use of that as well. And I know Tyson will go in a bit more detail on that. So I'll just leave this here. And then um, you can explore um, Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll just uh, let Tyson cover LinkedIn uh, from here onwards. So um, yeah, Tyson, I'll actually ask a quick question to you. Um, you know, if you could tell us about um, if you have successfully used any of these online resources that you would like to share with us. Um, yeah, so actually I, I use quite a bit of them. Um, when I was pretty new, I was introduced to Scott directories. Uh, through YMCA Newcomer Information Center in Scarborough. So they helped me navigate through the system. It was pretty simple. It's almost like the job bank that you have showed me, showed everybody early on. Uh, I actually use job bank as well. And I'm pretty 
active on LinkedIn. So it was just at that time um, that was like five years ago that I started link. I had LinkedIn, but wasn't really using it or maximizing it. Um, so again, there's an importance in using LinkedIn, which we will get into details later on. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, LinkedIn is definitely one of my favorite tools as well. So um, I'll let you talk about it more. Uh, but yeah, actually, um, now I will pass the presentation back to you. Um, if you could please go over the remaining labor market tools today. Sure. Thank you so much, Abra. So there are other great ways to guard to gather mark labor market information, it's by exploring your options. And there are quite a few ways, as you see on the screen right now. Exploring your options can help you research different career path, industries, salaries, and trend. This also enables you to find out what may be the required experience for you, whether it be additional or current educational background they already have, the soft skills or technical skills and experience. Ultimately, these strategies are more hands-on ways to gather labor market information. First would be informational interview. So this is done by asking a professional in your desired field to sit down with you and answer your questions. You can discover the requirements on education, training, entry-level roles, and other aspects they followed along their career path. Start with your immediate network, then extend outside your circle to find individuals working at a company or a career path that you are interested in. Remember, an informational interview is not a job interview. A personal experience that I had and I've done informational interviews in the past is before joining YMCA, I was working in a bank and when I was planning to make some career switch, I took the initiative to reach out to individuals who were working in the nonprofit sector. I spoke to them with different roles, different organization, and I tried to get more information on their day-to-day -day work, their task, what are expected from them, and their backgrounds. So it helped me assess if their roles or the sector is fit to my career goals. Another job search strategy would be job shadowing. This activity involves spending a day, a week, or even another short period in observing a professional on the job. You may accompany them to a meeting or watch them complete their regular daily work. At the same time, you can use this time to make a little bit of an informational interview. You're ready with the professional. You can ask them, how is it done? How is the organization? How is their day-to-day -day life in that work? Not all places, though, approve individuals for job shadowing, but it's definitely great to ask and show your interest for it. The third one would be networking. It is a process of exchanging information and developing professional or social contacts. Networking will often be one of the greatest tools you can have to land a job interview. As many jobs are not posted online, please take note that all of the processes shown on your screen right now are different type of networking, different types of networking. However, we would like to outline many organizations may hold networking events specifically for you to, to help you get to know what is out there and help you begin your professional network, whether it be in a community, it could be also in a school or just organizations who held out, who organized these career fairs. I really encourage you to take time and be proactive in networking. Also, as what Abra mentioned early on, with most of the things virtual right now, given the pandemic situation, LinkedIn is a great social networking site for professionals where you can follow and connect with other professionals to build connections understand emerging hiring trends and also industry trends and updates so just going back to what i mentioned early on when i did my networking um, with people in the nonprofit sector it was linkedin that i used to reach out to them i didn't know them we didn't have um 
we didn't have like a common friend or a common professional person that we knew. I just sent them a message that I was interested to know about their background, their field, as you know, I'm thinking about looking, I'm looking at into those, um, into a new field. And they gladly accepted my invitation. So it could be, again, starting from your own circle, then you go outwards, but LinkedIn just gives you more reach as it gives you, especially for people who haven't landed yet. So it gives you a, an advantage of reaching out to people in Canada even before you land, and that will help you do your preparations for your career. Moving on, similarly, there are internships. For example, you should consider more direct field experience, these opportunities may be paid, sometimes they're not, but again, they're likely to give tasks more relevant to your intended role and help you learn more about the industry, skills, and successes. Another one is part-time work. Part-time versions of many jobs may be available with fewer entry-level requirements. Part-time work is also great if you're currently in the process of upgrading your skills. It gives you more flexibility. Another quick example would be as I shared earlier, I took a part-time work as a telephone interviewer. During this time, I was waiting for my job, uh, my job applications with the bank. Although not directly a finance or banking job, I not only have benefited from the work experience and of course the pay, but also I benefited from having a reference through the job when my bank application came through. And again, it also gave me that experience that I needed to learn how to work in a Canadian workplace setting. And lastly, you can find a mentor, learning from an experienced mentor and listening to them talk about the realities of a career can be very informative. You can consider applying their career path choice to your own and identify steps that may also work for you. There are many pre-arrival organizations, including Next Stop Canada, that can help you find a career mentor. And we will further explain and mention some of the organizations in the next slide. Now I will talk about pre-arrival programs that can help you prepare for working in Canada and understand the labor market before you arrive. As stated on your screen, pre-arrival employment programs can help you find employments in your field, know more about labor market, or connect you with a mentor. These pre-arrival employment services can also provide online courses and webinars to provide you with more specific information about job search, the challenges, and opportunities. In addition, it may help you learn to spot opportunities and career shortcuts you may encounter in your path. I'd like to highlight some great pre-arrival partners. We have Active Employment and Integration Project, or AEIP, Canada InfoNet, which, is all, which also has a great mentorship program, Settlement Online Pre-Arrival, or SOPA, Connexion Francophones for French speakers outside Quebec. Those are for more general employment support. We also have industry-specific pre-arrival programs, and they are build on. These are for those who want to work in Ontario skilled trades, engineering, and construction careers. Access Employment has finance, IT, healthcare, engineering, HR, sales and marketing, leadership, supply chain, business program for francophones living in Ontario, and entrepreneurship program, which is Canada-wide. Go Talent are for those people who are interested to work in the IT industry, also a Canada-wide program. BCCA Integrating Newcomers is a nationwide program for professionals working in constructions and other supporting occupation in that field. PASS is for international and educated nurses. And FAST BC is a self-paced online career pro preparation program for individuals working in accounting, biotech, and life, science, life sciences, culinary arts, IT, and skilled trades. All right, now onto the next slide, I will talk about our pre-arrival services for youth as a way for youth to receive assistance in their employment and settlement journey to Canada. So if you are a youth or have children, another excellent pre-arrival services that I would like to highlight is our youth services with Next Stop Canada. In, the, in addition to services for adults, Next Stop Canada is one of a few pre-arrival settlement service with a youth program. 
a youth program aims to guide immigrants ages from 12 to 19 with information, youth resources, and teen membership. So basically, we have many services for youth. First, all youth will receive their own settlement plan personalized with resources and information specific to their special needs. We have webinars for youth to attend and their parents about topics such as attending elementary or secondary school, as well as career planning and finding employment as a youth. You will have access to youth-specific blogs, videos, blog, uh, video blogs, and e-learning courses in our platform. One of the most unique features of our program is a youth mentorship program, where pre-arrival youth are matched with the youth in Canada, and they can receive one-on-one -on -one mentorship and support. Finally, we have recently introduced youth training opportunities. They, these are more interactive webinars where youth can gain valuable life in, a can, in Canada and Canadian labor market. So those were the tools to gather labor, market information, employment programs to help you prepare your work and settle in Canada. So now I'll pass on the presentation to Abra. All right, Tyson, thank you so much. Well, sorry, it took me a while to change the slide. All right, so um, as we wrap up today's uh, webinar or the presentation, the last thing that we would like to add is that planning for employment uh, may require you to refine your goals from time to time and again, and uh, it is okay. So once you have done your research uh, and have enough understanding of the uh, about your skills, the options that you have in Canada and the labor market in your desired profession or a job that um, that you are interested in, you can always tweak your initial goals and decide which career path to take. Just remember to always be flexible and adjust your goals because. Um, you might not be able to get exactly what you had before because that might not be um, available here, but you will get something, um, you know, based on your um, goals and what were you looking for or your skills. So, for example, if you have your eyes set on becoming an engineer in Canada and found out that it may take some uh, time to reach this long term goal because, you um, there you have to uh, get a license to work as an engineer in Canada. Maybe one of your short term goals uh, is to get an alternative job within your field while completing your requirements to get your license. So you get you're still working towards your long term goal, um, but just take a short um, you know, just take like an alternative uh, career path for a while. And then another example, like I previously mentioned, if you're still deciding where to settle in Canada and after you do your research, you may find out that um, it's better to, um, let's say, Alberta, because the my oil and mining industry is booming there and there might be more job opportunities and you are from that industry or you would like to work in that industry. Or it is... Um, Toronto, since the tech industry is booming there. So you can always um, understand that. And then you can modify your goals to where you would like to settle based on where the job market um, is better for your specific industry, if that is the factor that you're looking into. Um, so your overall, your career plan can be ever changing. And that's what is really great about uh, it. And then remember that landing a job can be challenging, but you can st be strategic about it. And make sure to understand your skills, set goals for yourself, and learn about your labor market and avail the uh, support that is uh, that is available to you and it's free of cost. Um, the pre-arrival programs are actually free of cost. Um, so uh, yeah, and you can always refine your goals as necessary. So um, I yeah, that's all about um, that's. Um, I'll just finish off our presentation today. But before we get into the Q and A, I will just. Um, talk a little bit about our services. So Next Stop Canada provides uh, an online information and orientation about life in Canada. The program is offered in English and French, both official languages. And we also offer connections to a wide range of newcomer uh, support to adults and youth before they arrive in Canada. 
So that's basically a little bit about our program. Now, um, I'll briefly go over some of our services. So first of all, we have um, live chat option on our platform. So we are available Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. EDT. And uh, this will give you um, give our clients a great opportunity to ask all your questions in real time and get the answers right away. Second is a personalized settlement plan. So every member is given one based on their needs. Um, we do conduct a needs-based assessment, try to understand our clients' needs. And then from there, we offer them a settlement plan. Then we have live webinars just like this one in which we cover different topics uh, relevant to our clients before and after arrival experiences. We also have online resources, which include blogs, videos, um, pre-recorded webinars. Again, all of it is relevant to our clients' uh, experiences and concerns. Uh, we also have a topics forum, which can be used to ask any questions by topic. And one of our information referral specialists will provide information or uh, the answers to your question. And then we have a mentors forum, which is another great feature on our platform. If um, if you are looking to connect with somebody uh, in your field or if you're looking for a networking opportunity, you can start by using our mentors forum because our mentors are also um, immigrants who immigrated to Canada and have established themselves um, by entering their occupation or making a successful career change. And lastly, again, if you have any children between the ages of 12 to 19 years old, you can also register them for our youth program as uh, Tyson mentioned earlier. So that's all about our services. Now uh, we are on social media as well. So you can follow us on our LinkedIn page. Uh, we share our network and employment related information there. We are also on Twitter, so you can get live updates there about immigration settlement and um, there's lots more always coming up and happening. And lastly, we have our Next Stop Canada closed group. So only the Next Stop Canada members can join this group. And this is available for both um, individually for adults and the youth members. Um, there's a separate group. And it is a great place uh, if you would like to talk to other newcomer youth before you arrive and share your experiences with them. So, um, I'll just move on to the last slide. Uh, and if anyone's interested in registering for Next Stop Canada, it is very simple. And you will just have to follow these steps on your screen. You can visit the website www.nextstopcanada.ca, click on the register button, and just fill out the registration form. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, now on your screen are contact details. You can see mine and Tyson's and um, the one at the bottom. If anyone has any questions or, or if you speak French only, you can always contact Stephanie. She's our French uh, information referral specialist. And also um, if you need more information about youth program, you can always message me or Tyson as well. But uh, Stephanie's a youth information referral specialist, so she can give you more information on that. All right, so um, Gerard, over to you. We are actually um, done with our presentation and we are happy to take any questions now. Uh, thank you, uh, Brian. Thank you, Tyson, for all the information you gave and uh, the personal uh, examples you shared as well. It uh, makes it so kind of um, helps everyone understand and uh, visualize as well the situation and how they could better prepare for employment. So we have uh, some questions uh, from the audience and this is a reminder as well to everyone attending uh, this webinar on Zoom or who have uh, joined us on uh, YouTube to type in their questions in the Q&A tab on Zoom or the chat uh, field in on YouTube. Uh, so that uh, Abra and Tyson, they are here. They can answer all, the, all your questions. That's the benefit of attending a live webinar. Uh, so uh, Abra, there's uh, one question is about uh, Canadian experience or Canadian education. This is a question again that gets repeated, uh, I know, but uh, uh, so there's uh, Mid Osman asking uh, that there's a general belief that to get a Canadian job, one should have Canadian education uh, or job experience or any international certification. How much this statement is true and, uh, and do they need to achieve uh, the professional certifications uh, before they come to Canada? 
All right. Um, that's a very good question and definitely a most uh, popular question as well. Um, I'll, I'll start Tyson and then you can add anything to it as well. All right. So um, there is definitely, uh, you know, I wouldn't call it a myth. I, I would say that it, it exists. And Tyson and both uh, of us are actually immigrants. And then we came from a different country without any Canadian experience. And we both navigated the situation in different ways. So I'll speak from my uh, point of view that uh, definitely employers do look for uh, Canadian experience or what are you bringing to the organization or what you're bringing to the table. But at the same time, um, I'll just mention that I'm not a employment specialist, but I'm speaking from my experience or experiences of others that what they're trying to see is that how adoptable you are or if you would be able to adjust in that environment or in that culture. So there are different ways you can navigate that um, challenge. Like for me personally, what I did is as soon as I moved to Canada, I started volunteering work. I volunteered for different organizations that I was interested um, in working for. And uh, from there, I was able to, first of all, understand their culture, um, you know, help myself understand that if I would want to work for them. And also, they were able to see my work ethics or my values as well. So that's one thing. And then another thing is that as you volunteer, obviously, not every volunteer opportunity that you take or an internship opportunity that you have might not land you a job, but that actually gives you some Canadian experience to add to your resume. So it always comes down to how you also translate into your resume. So instead of uh, maybe highlight not highlighting a lot on how you have never worked in Canada or how you have you don't really have a full-time job experience in Canada, you can um, be diplomatic with your words and try to, uh, you know, highlight what, what skills do you have. So focus more on the skills rather than where have you achieved those skills. So yeah, those are just some of the ways I would say you can um, do it. And it's funny enough because I am working for YMC, but I started with YMC as a volunteer. And that doesn't mean that I was well, where I was volunteering. That's exactly where I got the job. No, I was volunteering. I was able to build a network. I had a couple of references as well to add into my um, reference letter as well once I got the job. And I applied for a job. And then they, I don't know what they, uh, they saw, but I believe that it's, the uh, you know, it, they actually noticed that this person wants to really work towards this and then I already build the references to to add there. So that really helped me. Um, but yeah, um, that's all Tyson. Would you like to add anything to it? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Abra. So uh, again, volunteering is one key. I also volunteered when I first started. I volunteered for a nonprofit organization. But when it comes to the question itself, um, so what Abra mentioned is more of showcasing and highlighting your skills in your international experience. Well, it also depends on, and again, I'm not an employment specialist, but I've gone through the transition and I've gone through the pre-arrival and post-arrival program employment. And what I've always hear and they what they have trained us to, to think of is your international experience matter. It's only how you can highlight and let your Canadian employers know how you can fit in the role in terms of experience, in terms of culture and skills. Um, it would always depend on, again, what type of industry you are in. As I mentioned early on, if it's a regulated one and you do have to get that certification, definitely. But let's say if it's an unregulated one, skills using programs and background and your educational <laughs> attainment is always what you can highlight. Um, so again, it will differ from each person, but what I can say is any of these, uh, let's say barriers, uh, what I mentioned early on about networking, can, that can greatly help a newcomer land a job in Canada. So how can you again network? Remember, you can volunteer through networking. You can have informational interviews or coffee chat, as we call it. Learning more about the culture and learning more how to connect with Canadian employers and professionals will greatly help your job search. Gerard, I think you're muted. 
Yeah, it happens with <laughs> even with me. So yeah. thanks for the uh, all the advice you gave regarding uh, uh, volunteering and how to uh, get uh, local work experience uh, and showcase their skills. Uh, there's another question as well from Aksa, who has landed in um, in Canada a few months ago with her husband, and uh, they have been enthusiastically applying for jobs, but they think that they are missing something in their resume because uh, because I assume they are not. Uh, getting interviews or they're not uh, landing jobs. So uh, she's asking uh, what are the top four things required in a, a resume for the Canadian job market? All right. Um, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Just something's going on in my throat this morning. Um, I would say like when it comes to like top four, um, there is definitely um, like I, I wouldn't mention like top four because I don't think like I but I, I would say that how you can actually present your resume uh, when you are uh, applying for a job. So I'm not sure you might uh, be doing this already, but I, I would say that make sure that your job is tailored. Oh, sorry, your resume is tailored. Uh, for the job description or for the job that you're applying for. I did mention this in the uh, in the presentation as well, that when you are going through the job description, it helps you um, edit your resume. So let's say you have four working experiences, but uh, only two of your working experiences related back to the job that you're applying for. In that case, those are the two job um, experiences that you would want to highlight more rather than, um, you know, putting them all for just using this as an example. So what you should be doing is that looking at the job description and trying to pull out the keywords that you might would might want to add to your resume, because a lot of times for a lot of organizations, uh, the job only goes to a human or a person after it has gone through the screening that is usually using a software. And that software actually pick the keywords in your resumes and then it goes to the person uh, who, uh, you know, look at the resume themselves and then they actually read into it. So that's like one one thing that I would say it's really important is that to uh, uh, um, kind of like alter your job, uh, a resume specific to the job that you're applying for. And don't just have a general resume and start applying um, for any job that you find. That's one thing. Another thing I would also mention that it seems like that you're already in Canada. I'm not sure which province or which city you are in, but um, there are settlement organizations that are available Canada-wide. It's not just like in one city. Um, you can find them by doing a Google search or if you would like to, you can contact us as well and we might be able to give you, um, find you an organization close to you. But they usually do these um, resume clinic clinics or you know workshops where they actually look at your resume and help you tailor your resume. And I know like uh, I work for YMC and I don't mean to just keep saying that, but that was also another thing that well, YMC has an employment center that is in uh, Ontario, GTA. I registered for their employment services as well. And I was assigned an employment um, consultant or a specialist. And they actually went through my resume and they asked me, what am I looking for? And based on that, they helped me tailor my resume uh, for the Canadian, um, in a Canadian template or the format that really helped me. So um, yeah, that's all Tyson. If I missed anything, or if you would like to add anything, please go ahead. Um, you pretty much touch on most of the tips. Um, it starts with updating your resume. So there is a, a specific Canadian style resume. Uh, if you're not aware of that, if you do go to a newcomer information center in your city, uh, they will provide you clinics on that or even workshops. So these workshops are not just about your resume. It also helps you, um, uh, train you in answering questions when you're invited for an interview. So the format and what Abra mentioned about the keywords and highlighting your um, your experiences might be the key for you to get those callbacks and of course getting some additional help and support from those newcomer information center in your town. So uh, the, uh, your answer uh, your answer is actually. Uh answer the remaining questions as well that are all related on uh, 
supports available or, or help available to find a job in Canada. So once they land in Canada, if they had already not connected with the Next Stop Canada, but they can, as you mentioned, Tyson, they can go to any YMCA uh, newcomer center, employment referral center in their local uh, city or town, and they would help them to or guide them to where they can find uh, jobs that they can apply for and also get the support they need to help them prepare for those jobs. There was one question uh, from YouTube as well about uh, the demand for IT uh, engineers uh, in Canada, but uh, just a reminder in case the viewer joined a bit late, uh, you answered, you had answered Abra about the job bank where they can uh, know where uh, different jobs are more in demand in Canada. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, we're almost uh, we're over uh, almost over with our time for today's webinar. Uh, thank you, uh, Abra, and thank you, Tyson, again for all your informative uh, presentation and answers that that you gave. That would help uh, uh, attendees uh, today and everyone who has registered to this webinar, and they will watch it uh, afterwards in a recorded format to uh, better uh, prepare uh, for their Canadian employment uh, journey. So uh, this way we uh, end our uh, webinar for today, preparing ahead, uh, planning for Canadian employment with Tyson and Abra from uh, Next Stop Canada. Uh, you will get a reminder that you will get a recording of today's webinar in a follow-up email. So keep an eye on your inbox. Uh, you will get a link to uh, Next Stop Canada's uh, program uh, recording so that you can watch it again share it with your uh, friends or, or relatives or if you missed the webinar you, you couldn't attend in person just uh, take it take one hour of your time and watch it uh, so that you are better informed before we uh, before we wrap up just a reminder as well uh, to uh, keep up with a new Canadians uh, through our social channels and our newsletter so that you are uh, informed about uh, excellent programs such as Next Stop Canada, uh, about the work they do, the support they offer to help uh, immigrants to Canada before and also after they arrive here through the different programs and uh, the departments that they have. And uh, once you exit this webinar, uh, you will uh, find a short survey. Uh, please uh, take a uh, uh, a minute of your time to answer it. It will help us uh, better produce and organize future events to help meet your needs. And thank you again to everyone who joined us from uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, and uh, one uh, last thanks to our presenters, excellent presenters for today, Abra and Tyson. <laughs>